It was quite a night, wasn't it? Manchester City losing the Carabao Cup for the first time in over five years. Yep. Um, what does this tell us about West Ham? Because we we, we kind of knew already, Simon, that they're beginning to go places. Um, are they ready to disrupt the top six, do you think, on a regular basis? Um, I think they're certainly in good form and they're certainly in good nick and everything you would want them to be, which is the collective... Mm. Um, a group of players that players that are coming in and games. I mean, everybody rotates and both sides rotated, but that was comparable for both sides. And West Ham had the spirit and the wherewithal to come through, which was a, a very good game of football and win on a penalty shootout. Does it detail that they are going to disrupt the top six? Well, spend pattern, consistent spend pattern, and being able to go toe for toe alongside having a very good manager will help them do that and that's the argument that West Ham fans will have amongst themselves as to whether their owners are going to continue to patronise. Right now, they've they've got they've, they've gotten a little bit lucky because they had to have two bites at a cherry to find a manager that's capable of doing a job for them. They didn't recognise yeah, it first true. time round with him. True. And David is in... I mean, I saw Stuart, um, our friend Stuart Pierce last night doing the interviews after the game, talking about the spirit in the camp, mm. talking about the belief, talking about the nature of the whim. Look, they're in good nick, West Ham. Momentum is build, being built by wins. They're beating sides that, that arguably are sides that you might question whether they should beat. In a cup competition, Man City, the irony of this particular one is Man City will probably go and run off and win the Champions League now. That's right. Um, um, yeah. Because the League Cup dominance has been brought to an end and yeah. now they'll probably turn up in the, in the Champions League and win that tournament mm. as some, some form of but irony. You, you look at it, Simon, West Ham, fourth in the league, top yep. of the Europa League group yep. and cup quarter finalists. And yet you, and I don't know if it's because you know them so well and have had dealings with them, you, like so many West Ham supporters, you know what's coming here, will not at any time give too much credit oh, to, to Messrs Gold, I, Sullivan no, or I do, I do. I give them credit where credit's due. I've been very much on, on their camp when it comes to the endless abuse from these guys under the moniker of GSB out because I think that whatever Sullivan and Gold do, they will find a reason for finding an ability to discredit it and you have to give credit to the ownership of the football club because a football club is some of all its parts. Everybody knows that they didn't move the stadium in a way that brought the fans along with them. Everybody knows that they've had challenges about some of the statements that they've made. Yeah. I do think that some of the abuse that David and David have got has been unjust and Karen as well. Um, you know, I've had my dealings with them but I'm, I'm, I'm fair. I, I do feel... Were that, they not fair? Well, they weren't fair in the dealings, no. But that's a different discussion. But I am, I'm a fair person in a balanced point of view where they've said things that they need to be held accountable for and when they've got abuse that they're not entitled to have gotten. Now, we know, sitting in this studio, whether, whether West Ham fans that have a binary view or a one-dimensional view of Sullivan and Gold, if this team loses two games in a row, the bottle will turn back to what the owners haven't done and how dreadful they are and how the taxpayer stadium is a dreadful environment for people to have to be in and everything was sacrificed when they moved the, from the Berlin. So people of that view will never be dissuaded of it. But I, I, in order to have a balanced conversation with you, I'm not going to run down one particular route and say they're the best owners in the world and I'm not going to run down the other one yeah. and say they're the worst. Well, the thing is, Simon, we now know, and yesterday the story broke, the, the capacity at the London Stadium is yeah. going to be increased increased to 62,500. Yep. So the same Messrs Sullivan, Golden, Brady are going to have to step up to the plate, aren't they? Because big times lie ahead for West Ham if West Ham want to embrace bigger times. Well, we will see, won't we? Because the increasing of a stadium isn't a goodwill gesture. It's not a charity. It's because they're going to make more revenue from it. By putting 8,000 fans more into a stadium, they're probably going to produce 12, 15 million pounds a year worth of increased revenue and probably cost them 10 million to do it. So it's a commercial transaction. And that commercial transaction will underpin in, to some extent, the development of the club. It's not going to make a difference between whether they can match Man City, because they can't. Whether mm. it's not going to make a difference mm. whether they're going to match Man United, because they can't. Yeah. What it is doing is showing that a very effectively run football club, and some of the things that I listened to last year, I was very much in their camp when their captain came out and talked about his outrage, um, Mark Noble, about the sale of Grady Dingana to West Brom. I thought that was destructive that and counterproductive. That enraged you, didn't it, it? Well, I just think it's disrespectful and disloyal. And, and I don't think he should be doing that. And West Ham fans will say, which is he's right, he's the captain. He also has to recognise that he's a cog in a wheel and an employee and there should be an element of loyalty there. And actually, he's been proven to be wrong because the key teams kicked on. The manager was obviously comfortable with it and look at the team now. So he was wrong. Yeah. Um, and I felt at the time it was wrong for him to have done it. Yeah. Um, and I think that ultimately in times of adversity, everyone clubs together. It shouldn't be different islands. It shouldn't be owner over here, player over here, manager over here. What you've got, and they're difficult people to deal with, David Sullivan is difficult to deal with. But they, why you always tell me that? Why? Because, I find be, because very straightforward to deal with. Well, because you're giving them a platform to impart their message. When you want to give a different message from David Sullivan, they'll go quiet. When you want to put David on the spot about something, you'll not hear from them. When they've got something to say, 
that's actually about promoting what they want to promote, then you'll get them. Right, and, and and when they get difficult questions, they'll they'll go to the ground. Yeah. Now my dealings with them were a long time ago, and I respect them on certain levels and not on others, you know. And and obviously, I watch their progress at West Ham, and I watch what they're doing. And some of the criticism they've got is just, and some of it's unjust. And both should be called out equally. I'm not going to sit there and say certain things about them which I don't believe to be true just because I have a view of them based upon my experiences. I'm going to call it objectively at the time. It was ridiculous to say that building a club for the top six involves selling Dimitri Pyre and buying Robert Snodgrass in exchange. That's a ridiculous observation. It's ridiculous to suggest that you brought the fans with you when you moved to a stadium that clearly didn't embrace the stat fans and you knew there was going to be some resistance yeah. to them. Yeah. But it's also ridiculous to be subjected to some of the abuse that they've been, abu- that they've been subjected to. To have people get involved with perhaps physically engaging with David gold oh, whatever you I think mean, of david david's it, 80 years of age plus exactly and you have to have a little bit of respect running a football club isn't despite the fact that people think it's the best job in the world i can assure you that it's not mm. and it comes with scant small amounts of satisfaction and most of the time you're fighting fires or dealing with the very people that are supposed to support you are the ones that are against you that doesn't mean fans shouldn't call them out it doesn't mean fans shouldn't have a view but right now what you've got is a football club that is in ascendancy and whether you like it or you don't west ham fans that also includes David Sullivan, David Gold, and Karen Brady. Yeah. Because they are the architects of the financial landscape that survived the COVID pandemic, mm. that kept it in order, didn't sell its best assets, have now re-employed a manager they should have got right the first time round, and are now sitting in with a side that's fourth in the league currently, that's now in progressing into Europe and doing well there, progressing in domestic cups, you have to give credit where credit's due. Sure. And you have to give credit to Noble, to be honest, Simon, last night. You, you mentioned Mark Noble, and I do remember the tweet, and it was ill-advised in my view as well, and I agree with you on that. First penalty last night, stepped up, took it, converted it. Yeah, so he uh, should. And that got them off and running. So he showed a bit bottled there, to be fair. What, because he came on the pitch the other day and missed one? Uh, when he shouldn't have been on the pitch taking it. I, mean, yeah, well, I don't know. Pretty much. Well, I, I, can't, I find it difficult, and maybe it's because I'm, 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 a bit, I'm a bit blunt. I find it difficult to praise people for doing what they should be doing in the first place. I praise people for doing something exceptional, for being very good at what they do consistently. If somebody comes on a pitch and takes a penalty and scores it in a penalty shootout, I don't think I should be saying, well done to him. I think I should be saying, right, okay, next, who's up next? Because that's the job they're paid to do. He isn't paid to miss a penalty, is he? Well, how about praising Gold, Sullivan, Brady for the Kids for a Quid campaign but last that, night? But that's a campaign that's been running for years. We all do Kids for a Quid on League Cup games. And, and the bottom line is you have to get Man City <laughs> to agree to that. And all the pyrotechnics before the game will be half paid by Man City because the gate receipts are split down the middle. So these are all things that are done by clubs and have been done by clubs. If you've got 60,000 fans turning up for a League Cup game, you can afford to put a few pyrotechnics on. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.